as a gay tradesman, Jesus Christ, uh, that was the, it was a big nightmare. I get abusive phone calls. Um, I get people like you know shouting out windows or like on building sites. Whenever I park up the van, that's it. You know, it's people start laughing and or shouting out stuff and things like that. As soon as they find out it's a gay company, uh, you know, some people are happy about it, um, but they don't like to be associated with a van. They don't like getting in the van because they think, you know, people are going to think they're gay. But one guy even emailed me back to say that he's a family man and that, and he didn't want a job because he sussed all the uh, rainbow flags and everything. And uh, I sat there and I thought, like, you know, but I'm a family man as well. Yeah, this is one of the workers that I had working for me. Um, and that's the sort of just attitude that some people come out with. And, uh, and their things, I ignore things like that. It doesn't bother me no more. I started a company 15 years ago, um, then decided to, to go a bit further and turn the bands pink. I get noticed everywhere I go because no one can bloody miss me. <laughs> so I can't go through speed cameras because I know who I am without the number float, so I'm buggered. No. I work for the gay community. I work for anyone, but a, a lot of my work is through the gay community because they feel happy with me. Uh, being a you know like a gay person working in their house and stuff like that, but I, I've got all straight guys that work for me anyway, and that so I'll employ anyone and give anyone a chance. I was raised in uh, East London. My family or my mum's side is Maltese, and that so basically I was always my lifestyle was kept quiet from anyone. I never ever told anyone about me because I was just scared. And, that, and plus, I was I was unsure about myself, and that you know, thinking no, I can't be a puff or anything like that. Um, but I just, you know, as time went on, just came out like a big fairy. <laughs> Childhood was really rough. I had a few like issues, sort of issues where I couldn't talk to anyone about stuff, and that because I was abused when I was a child and that which I kept secret from everyone because being a Maltese family they wouldn't accept it and they would then turn around like you know and say I'll oh, just keep quiet don't say nothing to anyone. I never told people I only told my wife and that because I never told my family about you know what happened to me. What age and when did you realise you were gay? I don't know I think I was about 16. I sat there, kept on convincing myself, saying, no, I'm not. And then I decided to say that I was bisexual uh, because I ended up getting married to a woman who was bisexual as well. Um, got married to her, had a little kid, and um, they was, there was all this stuff on the newspaper and on the TV. Anyone that's a haemophiliac had blood transfusion, please come to the hospital and be tested. She went to the hospital, she was seven months pregnant, um, and she found out she was HIV positive. And, that, um, and the first thing they said is they wanted to abort a baby. And I turned around and said, you ain't going to do nothing like that. that. That's a human being. She had treatment here and everything, um, but it just got worse and worse. And, that, um, and then the last thing was when she came the last time and then she turned around and said that when she was leaving, she said, it's best we say goodbye now. And that, so. But once she passed away, then I didn't want to have a relationship with anyone. Um, I just wanted to be alone and try and sort myself out. After years, I sorted myself out, but then I met the partner of my life. And, that, so, and that's the best thing that's ever happened to me, because he's always been there for me and always will be there. I think without him, I don't think I would have ever been where I am now. And that, I would have been a builder, but nothing like what it is now. And that I would never have maybe gone into the gay market um, or advertised in a gay market because in case I get a, like a, a, a knockback or something like that. When I first came out, like when I first brought the company out, um, I was in all the national newspapers. Some guy phoned me up because I've got a, an advert on the radio 
uh, on a gay radio station. A guy phoned me up and said, oh look, we want to do a story about you. And I thought it was someone joking about. So I told him where he could get off, put the phone down. He called me back and he said, no, I'm being serious. I want to do a story. And I said, why do you want to do a story about me? He said, because you're a gay builder and you've got a pink van. And I said, yeah, but that's, it's only a joke. Next thing I knew, uh, I had a friend call me and he said, get the newspaper. He said, you're in the national newspapers. And I thought, no, he's joking. So I went to the local shop, bought the paper, and there I was, page three. And I was level as well, so, <laughs> pucker. Uh, and I even drove down um, South London. I was driving along and a guy at the traffic lights uh, pulled up in front of me and I thought, oh, here we go, Someone's gonna, something's going to kick off. And he turned around and he said, are you that guy in the newspaper? And I went, I think so. He went, good on you, mate. That's all right. I get emails from, or not email, like messages from people saying, like, you know, brilliant, well done and all that. And I sit there and I feel so proud. And I think, you know, I thought I was going to get a lot of stick here, and I didn't. And I thought, wow. That's unbelievable. And, that, and then some of the remote, like, comments, it was no neg nothing negative. It was all positive comments all the time. I thought, these people are saying it to me. And, that. and I thought, you know, it's not why, but it's like I just felt so, in a way I felt a bit emotional and that, about it because I thought, like, you know, bloody hell, the support I've got is unbelievable.